Hey folks, it is Saturday, November 5th, 11, 14 p.m. in beautiful San Diego, California. I am Captain Perry here with you. Um, if you're new here, the mission here is to build a strong trailerable 14 to 15 foot sailboat that is uh, leak proof and capable of crossing oceans. So quick correct correction for the last video, I said something about um, hooking up two six volt batteries and um, wiring it so that they had uh, 12 volts. That was a mistake. This was 11 years ago. I had two 12 volt batteries wired in parallel uh, to double the amp hours. And that's what I was thinking I'd do again. And I am considering lithium. It's quite expensive, but maybe, I guess they say over the long term, it's cheaper. So I'm going to consider it. Um, I didn't get as much done over the last couple weeks as I hoped to. Uh, disadvantage of working with this PVC foam core is it's a little slower. I mean, you have to fiberglass with cloth both sides, whereas plywood, you might get away with not putting any fiberglass matting on a frame. But I still think it's worth it for the advantages, which are is way lighter. It will pretty much never rot. And you can cut it with a box cutter. You don't have to use a circular saw or a jigsaw or something. Um, I, the enormity of, of the task does sometimes get in my head. Everything I'm going to have to do, um, having a steel keel made, figuring out how the hell I'm going to make the uh, lead that's going to bolt onto this keel, um, transporting it, how am I going to slide it out of this garage and get it up onto a trailer without pissing off all my neighbors too much. Um, making or buying and retrofitting a carbon fiber mast, uh, making the sale, all that stuff. But I just have to break it into little pieces and then the enormity of the task, you don't really have to worry about it. So right now I'm just doing like a frame C5 to C6 to transom. Everything in between there, I'm just gonna focus on making that part and not worry about the rest. And uh, so I make these little checklists like this, and this is just like the next one or two weeks. Try and knock that out. Uh, let's see, I finished the transom and I'm still working on C5, it's halfway done. C5 is this big one, it's the biggest frame. And then C6, goes right in between the transom and C5. It's gonna look something like that. Um, it's like a it's like a quarter of a frame. It's just the bottom part. And so that I can still get in over it and store things down in there. Uh, let's take a look at what I got done so far. This is frame C5. That's the opening that I'll use to crawl into the stern where there's, there'll be cargo space. And here's the transom upside down. This piece of foam is uh, 16 centimeters too short, so I'm going to have to do another butt joint with this scrap piece. This is the largest frame. Here's frame C5, and there's the transom. So what I'm gonna do is, this doghouse is 80 centimeters wide, so I'm just gonna add this portion of the back of the doghouse here and have it be integrated with C5. That should be stronger that way, so for this little portion that I cut out that's going to be added to the top of the rest of C5. I've added this little square and that's part of the doghouse. And the reason I don't go the full 80 centimeters is because we gotta we gotta curve this. The transom is now cut out and I've put a mark 10 centimeters from the bottom and 7 centimeters from the top 
and that's where I'm going to have to put in a more solid core to hold the brackets that will hold the rudder. This is the other side of the transom, the inside side, and it's going to get a frame of 1x2s. This is just to strengthen it up since it's going to hold the stresses of the rudder. I'm not going to do this to all the frames. This is the cockpit. Now I know I want to add about a 3 degree angle up so that water can easily run off, but not so much angle that you're uncomfortable. So I need to know how high to place the support here that's going to be glued to C5 uh, before I even finish making C5. So just with some math, I know this is 110 centimeters and if I want three degrees right here, I got to go up six centimeters and that's going to equal 92 centimeters up from the bottom here. There's a plastics store near me and they happen to have off cuts of acrylic. So I think this was like two dollars a pound. And this is gonna, I'm gonna cut it like here in a two by four shape. And this will replace the core. It also happens to be one centimeter thick, just like my core. So this will replace the core anywhere where I'm gonna have a backing plate for like the rudder gudgeons or cleats and I just needed something uncrushable and rot proof so this will do the trick I just finished epoxying one side of the transom. This will be the back side. And what I did was put in three layers of six ounce cloth that are two inches by four inches, and then a two inch by four inch sheet of acrylic to replace the foam core with something that is not crushable but also won't rot. Three more little pieces of six ounce cloth on top of that. A piece of 1708 over the whole thing which is very heavy and then a layer of six inch six inch six ounce cloth running down the center line this is the forward side of the transom and what I did for this side is a, a kind of thin six ounce cloth across all the foam and then thickened epoxy and laid down this one by two frame just to stiffen it up. And this um, plywood piece here in the middle, this is where the rudder uh, is going to mount. The rudder will be on the other side, the backing plate will be back here. This side got um, 1708 fiberglass cloth just over this part because this needs to be really strong. So 1708 is 17 ounce biaxial plus or minus 45 degree uh, strands. And then it's got a three quarter ounce chop strand mat backing. So all in all you get a total weight of 25 ounces per square yard. I have no idea how to translate that to grams per square meter, so sorry. Um, 12 layers of this stuff will make one inch. Oh, we're not gonna use that much. The, these pieces here are gonna help support a uh, two by three inch beam that'll uh, be like the subfloor of the cockpit to help support the weight. 
For this plywood, I fully saturated both sides in unthickened epoxy before laying it down to the foam with thickened epoxy. And also the 1708, it's recommended to apply the smooth side up with the chop strand mat side down. All right, guys, this is going to be a short one. Um, my short term plans are to uh, finish up building C5 and C6 and then um, get them vertical and squarely placed and then epoxy them in place with a floor grid in between. So um, that's it. I appreciate you watching. As always, uh, like, comment, subscribe, share if you want to, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks. Mr. Board, let's make all preparations for getting on the way. That guy sure likes to carry things. Hey, uh, what's your name, buddy? Home. Get back to your station or I'll have you shot from a mutineer. Well, shoot something.